Hello, this is the TradeSite Forex Market Preview and International Economic Data Roadmap for the week beginning uh, Sunday the 25th of May, although we do have the Monday Bank Holiday for Memorial Day here in the U.S. and ending uh, on Friday the 30th. Hope you had a great trading week. Here's the dollar index as we usually start out daily chart. You can see we're pretty much nowhere. Uh, the bulk of the last two months has been between 80 and a half and 79 and a half on the dollar index. That's two of the flattest months now total, uh, two and a half months really. Uh, since the beginning of March, I can recall uh, on trading the uh, Forex market. And, and even if you go back to October, which is now seven months back, uh, it expands the range by only about a point. So this is just, I mean, seven months of just this flatness. I, I just can't recall. Let's take a look at the weekly chart. I want to show you uh, just to fill you in going backwards in time. So that's this area right here. You know, Meanwhile, we had a little bit better range prior to that where we'd have about five points. And that would be a huge difference, by the way. Here's five points of movement from last uh January through July and some back and forth and you know generally speaking if you pick a six month grouping of of the dollar index most of the time you're going to have uh, four or five points of range and, and that certainly is tradable sometimes even better than that if you go back uh, to the beginning of this chart you can see uh, even in a six point or six month range we went uh, nine points up and back to form that spike you also notice that in July of 2012 we had that's the only uh, seeker signal on the entire chart this is four years or so of data. And the Seeker 13, that call is the high right there. We rolled over, and we still have a red static trend line from that in play. That means if we ever do break to the downside, uh, that would be the target. And then let's back out and go to a monthly chart, and you can see this goes back to the mid-90s here. So a lot of movement uh, over time, but this is a narrowing triangle wedge now, if you look at it carefully, uh, since uh, about 2005. And at some point, we should break that either way. But I just like to remind people, this is not about regulation. Everybody points to the regulation of the marketplace. That doesn't change the balance of power between currencies. This is about the fact that right now, uh, all these currencies are sort of balanced out and in sync. And you know they're not crushing the dollar. They're not running the dollar. Uh, there's just a, an equilibrium right now for the dollar, and we need something economic, uh, globally economic, uh, to go and shake this around to get things moving again. It looked like we were starting to get that back at the beginning of May when we finally dipped, but that lasted all of three days. Uh, so, having put that in that perspective, let's take a look at the euro dollar. Slipped a little bit this week, 120 pips of range, as you'll see when we get to the intraday charts. The pound dollar, even worse, nothing here. Uh, the Aussie, now this is a little more interesting. These two static trend lines, and they've both been used now, the resistance at the green line and the support at the red line from this week after the move down. So uh, now let's take a look at the intraweek action. Uh, this is 30-minute bar charts of the euro dollar from last Friday to this Friday. Uh, net net, we lost about uh, 70 pips for the week, and as I said, about 120 pips of range. But the only real move was on Wednesday was the big move down. Uh, if we then go to the pound dollar, okay, a little more movement. We had a couple of partial winners and such this week uh, in, in terms of intraday action. The total for the week here, again, only 110 pips of range. And I also wanted to point out, here's a look at the levels uh, on Friday. And notice the average daily range numbers here. Okay, uh, This is uh, 72 pips for the euro. That means, that means if you take the last six months, you take the high and low of every day, that's the range for the day, the difference between the high and the low, how far we moved. And if you add up all the day's ranges for the last six months and divide by the number of days, you get 72 pips uh, per day. That would be so. If it goes 72 pips now, it has traded the average of the last six months, 88 on the pound. Those used to be and, and mostly were for the last 10 years about 120 to 130 on the euro, more than that on the pound. All the pairs now well under 100 pips of average daily range, except for the pound yen and the euro yen. That is extremely poor in general ranges. So that's what we're dealing with right now. In this, uh, in this troubled Forex market. Uh, all right, let's take a look at economic data that's due this week, uh, and then we'll wrap it up. So uh, trade balance out of New Zealand Sunday. Uh, we've got a bank holiday out of the UK. We've got a bank holiday here in the US for Memorial Day. So no calls for us for Sunday night. We will have levels. Uh, going into Tuesday, trade balance out of Switzerland, their employment level, corporate profits out of Canada Tuesday morning, durable goods out of the US, uh, the HPI and other data out of the U.S. here, minor data. Flash services, PMI, later on out of the U.S. Consumer confidence, that's a big number for stocks, but not really for Forex. Uh, MI leading index out of Australia, New Zealand's business confidence number. Um, going into Wednesday, GDP out of Switzerland, the UBS consumption indicator, German import prices, French consumer spending, German unemployment, uh, money, supp money supply out of Europe, private loans out of Europe, Spanish HPI, 
I got the German 30-year bond auction, retail sales out of Japan, HIA new home sales out of Australia, private capital expenditure out of Australia. Uh, we've got a bank holiday Thursday throughout most of Europe. Be aware of that. That will slow things down there. Current account out of Canada. Uh, second look at GDP for the Q1 here in the U.S. Uh, and Thursday morning at 8.30, along with weekly unemployment claims, preliminary GDP price index, then pending home sales, natty gas. Uh, the oil inventories are coming out Thursday because of the Monday holiday. Building consents out of New Zealand. And then the data dump out of uh, Japan. Household spending, both the national and Tokyo CPI, they separate their CPIs over there. And the unemployment rate followed by preliminary industrial production. Um, going into Friday, housing starts out of Japan, German retail sales, Canada has GDP, RMPI, IPPI, and the U.S. has core PC price index with personal income and spending, Chicago PMI, and the revised University of Michigan sentiment number for the month. Uh, none of our big three here in the U.S. this week, but we do have some data. Again, starting with the bank holiday, we'll go from there and see what happens. I hope you have a great trading week and a long, good uh, Memorial weekend here in the U.S. We will see you uh, as soon as we can start next week. Have a good weekend.